The emotions associated with fight or flight, emotions like anger and fear, are triggered deep inside our brain. Five, four, three, two, one, tug! And when we try to control them, we start a tug of war between our brain's oldest and newest parts. While ancient structures like the amygdala respond to threats by trying to turn our anger or fear on, it's newer structures, such as the prefrontal cortex, the thinking part of our brain, that try to turn them off. It's the tug of war between these two systems that gives rise to our emotions. At New York University, neuroscientist Joseph Ledoux has studied how the amygdala and the cortex shape our emotional responses. You know more about the amygdala than anybody alive, and you still can't control yours. No. Why? Now, the, there's an interesting thing, again, that has to do with the wiring of the brain. This is if we could just look at it here. So this is the human brain inside a skull. And the prefrontal cortex is here in the front, right behind your forehead. And that is the, the newest part of the, the brain. This is where we make our decisions, this is where we plan for the future um, and strategize. The lateral prefrontal cortex has no connectivity with the amygdala. The amygdala has super highways to talk to the cortex, but the prefrontal cortex has only back roads and side streets to get to the amygdala. And therefore, it is unable to tell the amygdala, cool it. But why are there no connections? We're in the process of evolving as we speak, and those connections have not been put in yet. This thing was built to do fancy things cognitively, not necessarily to control our emotions. Can we outsmart our own brains? Can we learn to control our emotions? Stanford psychologist James Gross has spent his career studying what scientists call emotion regulation. For me, emotion regulation is really the science of understanding how we can modify our emotions, harness their energy, so that we can direct them in ways that we wish to go. So for me, emotion regulation isn't turning down or turning off all emotions, because emotions, I think, are often incredibly helpful and are what make us who we are. But I think at times, it's great to have a set of tools that we can avail ourselves of so that we can change the course of the emotions that we're having. To test his theory, Gross asked about 100 women to take part in an experiment. Each woman was wired up to a machine so that researchers could measure her heart rate, pulse, and perspiration, all physiological indicators of emotional arousal. First, the women were asked to recall a recent incident that had made them angry, and to think about the incident again and again to keep turning it over in their minds, to consider and reconsider every detail. Scientists call this rumination. To Mary, this way of thinking came quite naturally. I didn't understand why it was so easy for me to like just go into these ranting raves and just become so obsessed on this thing, okay? You, you forgot to call me. Why did you forget to call me? You should have called me. I don't understand. Okay, you were busy, but I, re I, re I reminded you several times. It's, you become fixated on these things, you know, like, and you don't take a moment to breathe. In the next phase of the experiment, the women were again asked to think about the incident that made them angry but this time to try to visualize it as a neutral observer or from the perspective of the other person. This is a technique that scientists call reappraisal. When the subjects ruminated, their cardiovascular system went into overdrive. When they reappraised, their bodies became calmer and their anger diminished. One of the things that people for a very long time have uh, repeated again and again is that Actually, there's an important role for thinking in emotions. And if you can change the way you think, you can change the way you feel. Breathe in fully. At the suggestion of his therapist, Stephen has enrolled in a forgiveness class at Stanford University, a five-week program designed to alleviate anger, stress, and depression. This is a guided educational practice in forgiveness. I lead you through a series of practices 
that at the end, you become less attached to a certain negative point of view about something that's happened to you. What I see is so often people have become paralyzed because their anger hasn't worked. They have no idea what else is available and are stuck by something that's not working. Anger over time becomes less helpful. It actually becomes crippling. Dr. Fred Luskin created this program in 1999. Since then, it's been tested around the globe. We in each class, Luskin provides exercises to help students see that they can't control what happened to them, but they can control how they think about it. The idea is to get people to see that even though their anger is justified, it isn't hurting anyone but them. So the theme through all of this is, is the way you're dealing with it helpful to you? If it is, keep it. If it's not, change it. Try being more grateful. Try being more compassionate. Try telling a different story. Try arguing yourself out of feeling so entitled. Any one of those things can work, but the first recognition is, I may not be helping myself. If you do the same old, same old, expect the same result. Dr. Farchione uses cognitive behavioral therapy, or CBT, which is extremely effective for people with specific phobias. About 85% of those who try it show significant improvement. The cognitive behavioral therapy has got a different focus, which is on identifying and correcting dysfunctional thoughts and feelings that make you miserable. So, a cognitive behavior therapist is also interested in why you have those thoughts or feelings. He's interested or she's interested in basically getting you to identify them and challenge them. We say you have a little machine down buried in your emotional brain and it's spitting out, you know, all of these really scary kinds of thoughts. But because you're the one thinking those thoughts, you tend to believe it. So we have a saying in cognitive therapy, don't believe everything you think. One of the key principles behind CBT is that we can change our feelings by changing the thoughts that produce them. We're not trying to stamp out all bad thoughts. In fact, that might be counterproductive. We're just trying to say, let's look at the alternative. Let's put this in perspective. Let's reappraise this. And oh yeah, you'll continue to have scary thoughts, but you know what? You can live with them. And when they do that, it actually changes brain function. There are changes in the prefrontal cortex, working down into the emotional brain, just by this really working hard on reappraising.